Hey, welcome to a new video. Absinthe is actually a liquor with a hint of anise flavor, and it's made from various plants. It gets its green color from the chlorophyll and wormwood leaves. In the past, it was thought to cause convulsions and hallucinations due to certain chemicals. Fijon, a component of wormwood, raised concerns because in high doses, it can cause seizures. What's interesting about absinthe is that some cheaper versions of it were counterfeited in the 19th century with very dangerous toxic substances in them. This was also precisely the reason this got a bad reputation. Some people mistakenly think it's some sort of liquor, but actually it's more of a spirit. It also doesn't contain added sugars, so it's not as sweet as other fruity drinks. But it does have that recognizable anise flavor without the extra sweetness. In the early 1900s, absinthe was banned in several countries, including France, Switzerland, and the United States. This was mainly because people believed the drink led to all sorts of dangerous behavior. They thought absinthe corrupted the youth, encouraged immoral behavior, and even inspired violent actions. Another fact that makes absinthe interesting is that it has a high alcohol content, usually between 55 and 75%. That's many times stronger than your average whiskey, which is usually around 40%. So if you ever got the chance to taste absinthe, remember it has a bit of a wild history, but do drink it in moderation. Are you new to this channel? Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And before we start, also like the video. Tamaroka is a type of candy that has repeatedly tested positive for lead, with 28 cases of lead contamination in the past 11 years. This is more than any type of other candy. The fact that there's lead in this candy is very concerning, because lead is usually associated with hazardous substance in paint and not in food. The consequences of lead exposure can be quite severe. Lead is a harmful metal that can damage the human body, especially the nervous system, brain, and kidneys. Even small amounts of lead can cause problems such as behavioral and learning difficulties, as well as reduced intelligence and attention issues. Prolonged or high exposure to lead can lead to more serious health problems, including developmental delays, hearing loss, and organ damage. Lead poisoning can also occur when lead enters the body through eating or inhaling. In the case of Tamaroka candy, the sticky texture and the possibility of lead contamination in the candy pose a potential danger. Everclear is a somewhat scary yet intriguing drink with a mega high alcohol content of 95%. You could say it's the rock star among alcohol brands. This is also why Everclear is currently illegal in 11 states in the United States. Everclear grain alcohol has been a thing since the 1950s and has produced quite a few wild memories for people. It comes in two flavors, 151 proof, which is 75.5% alcohol, and the super potent 190 proof, which is 95% alcohol. For comparison, rum and vodka are less than half the strength of the Everclear drink. So yeah, it's some pretty powerful stuff. What's interesting is that Everclear is super clear and actually tastes and smells like almost nothing. That makes it quite dangerous, especially if people mix it in their drinks, as they may not realize how much they're actually consuming. Drinking Everclear can be very dangerous, with risks such as alcohol poisoning and even worse. So if you were considering trying it, please be very careful and responsible. Fun Dip, unfortunately, isn't as innocent as the name would suggest. The candy is packaged with sugar and artificial additives that can be harmful to our health. The high sugar content in Fun Dip can lead to fluctuations in blood sugar levels, which can contribute to health issues such as obesity, tooth decay, and even behavioral problems. Furthermore, Fun Dip provides no nutritional value and only delivers empty calories, which can promote poor eating habits. The main ingredients are dextrose, maltodextrin, and citric acid, followed by artificial flavors and colorings like Red 40, Yellow 5, and Blue 1. While these ingredients may seem harmless, a deeper analysis tells a different story. Dextrose and maltodextrin are forms of glucose that rapidly raise blood sugar levels. Repeated fluctuations in blood sugar levels can contribute to a risk factor of type 2 diabetes. High sugar intake is also associated with an increased risk of obesity, heart disease, and certain types of cancer. The large amounts of sugar in Fun Dip, often consumed quickly and repeatedly, can therefore be very harmful. As you can hear from the name, the Toxic Waste Nuclear Sludge Chewing Stick is a candy that is very dangerous. It was discovered a while ago that they were even toxic and found to contain twice the allowable amount of lead. Our bodies can only hold a very small amount of lead before it becomes toxic. The Toxic Waste Nuclear Sludge Chew Bars were cherry flavored and contained 0.24 parts per million of lead. Although the candy has a name that reminds you of Chernobyl, the effects were not nuclear. Fortunately, there were only a few reports that the candy had harmed anyone. If you had eaten more than a few bars, you probably needed a checkup with the doctor. And it turned out that children and pregnant women were at most risk by eating the candy. 
China set its sights on a particular energy drink and decided to ban it. And it wasn't without reason. We're talking about Redline Extreme, a super potent energy drink under the Redline brand of Bang Energy. This drink is specifically made for bodybuilders and people hitting the gym quite hard. What makes this energy drink so special, however, is that it comes in a small can of 240 milliliters, yet packs a whopping 316 milligrams of caffeine. Compared to other energy drinks, this is like a Hulk among them. Due to its extreme potency, it's recommended to drink only half of the can at a time because you don't want to overload on caffeine and have health issues. Redline Extreme not only contains caffeine, but also a bunch of other stuff. There was even a lawsuit over this drink, because the information on the Redline cans was so confusingly small that it was difficult to read. It was even smaller than what the FDA considered readable. Lucas Lemon and Super Lucas are candy products that can be found in both small convenience stores and large retail chains. While marketed as seasoned salt and chili mix, these products are consumed by many children as candies rather than intended seasonings. A specific investigation revealed that Lucas Lemon Cone Chili was contaminated with lead. Interestingly, both state and federal regulatory agencies were aware of this issue for a decade, but took little action to warn the public or remove the products from stores. In August 2004, the state issued a warning for Lucas brand salted candies. However, they did not require stores to remove these products from shelves, as they were labeled as seasoning and legally considered safe. These popular candies for children are packaged in small plastic salt shakers with vibrant, colorful labels. The powdered candies are contained within a shaker, and some children have the habit of pouring the powdered candy directly into their mouths, which they call waterfalling. However, several tests have repeatedly shown that these candies contained up to twice the allowable amount of lead. Buckfast Tonic Wine is a caffeinated brew originally made by the monks of Buckfast Abbey in England. Nowadays, it's licensed for production elsewhere and is quite popular, with reported sales of up to $50 million in March of 2017. What sets Buckfast apart from other drinks is its astonishingly high caffeine content, which in each 750 milliliter bottle contains as much caffeine as eight cans of cola. Some say it's like an energy drink, which can lead to less self-control and a distorted perception on how much you've consumed. Although Buckfast is marketed as a tonic, it has a rather poor reputation in some parts of Scotland and Northern Ireland. People associate it with bad behavior and antisocial conduct. The glass bottle in which it's sold has even been criticized for being used as weapons by intoxicated individuals and contributing to litter. In 2005, the Scottish Justice Minister even proposed stopping its sale in shops. Hippie Sippy is a candy introduced in the late 1960s, and it immediately caused a stir due to its packaging and association with illicit substances in hippie culture. The candies were packaged in a toy ampule strongly resembling a syringe filled with small, multicolored beads. The design of the packaging and the colorful candies alluded to various banned substances. The packaging featured phrases like, Hippie Sippy says I'll try anything and please feed me, further emphasizing the controversial nature of the candy, as it seemed to normalize illicit substances. While Hippie Sippy is no longer available, it's still remembered for its cultural shock value. We've talked about sugars before in the video, and that too much isn't good for your body. Too much sugar is also bad for your teeth and increases the risk of cavities, as well as obesity and type 2 diabetes. One of the candies that are incredibly high in sugar are Twinkies. There are reportedly 32 grams of sugar added to the little cookies with cream filling, making it extra body fat. But there have been people who decided to combine Twinkies with several Big Macs from McDonald's and also Pepsi Cola, which is also known to be incredibly high in sugars. So if you're not careful with what you eat, it could raise your blood sugar, or you could even have health problems. So make sure you don't eat too many things that contain large amounts of sugar. If you decide to do so, then at least don't eat too much. If you're a fan of brightly colored drinks with a hint of lemon and lime, then you're likely no stranger to Mountain Dew, the bright green thirst quencher. Originally conceived as a mixer with bourbon, Mountain Dew has instead become a star in its own right. What truly sets Mountain Dew apart from other soft drinks is the amount of caffeine it contains. While some sodas might give you a gentle caffeine boost, a can of Mountain Dew delivers a real wake-up call with 54 milligrams of caffeine. Mountain Dew is extremely popular in America, but if you ever traveled to Japan or some countries in the European Union, you may have made a shocking discovery that Mountain Dew is not available in supermarkets. This is due to an ingredient called brominated vegetable oil, abbreviated as BVO. It was once in the original recipe of Mountain Dew, which caused quite a stir. BVO contains a hint of bromine, an element that appears red and brown and smells like bleach. Moreover, they accumulate in your body and can cause memory problems, skin issues, and nerve trouble. Not to worry, in the United States, you can still enjoy your Mountain Dew without worrying about BVO. 
but in some countries, the drink is just a bit too wild for their taste. Despite European food safety regulators no longer considering titanium dioxide safe for human consumption, it's still found in popular candies. One of these candies is Starburst. The concerning additive is used to give these processed foods a smooth texture and a bright white color, though it provides no nutritional value. It's said that the use of titanium dioxide as a food additive can weaken the lining of the intestine and exacerbate the progression of inflammatory bowel diseases. There is even evidence that ingested titanium dioxide may not be completely excreted from the body and can be absorbed into the bloodstream, potentially exposing other organs to damage. Scientists have long voiced concerns about the potential toxicity of titanium dioxide, but the United States has not reviewed its potential hazards for over 50 years. This lack of reevaluation can be attributed to FDA regulatory negligence, allowing problematic ingredients to go unnoticed and unassessed. In 2006, Coca-Cola and PepsiCo were accused of selling soft drinks in Kerala, India that contained a high level of pesticides. In response to these accusations, the government banned soft drinks from both companies and government-run schools and colleges in four Indian states. Coca-Cola and PepsiCo denied the allegations, emphasizing that their soft drink produced and sold in India met strict international standards. Despite these claims, both companies' offices were temporarily shut down over the weekend. Gujarat was the second state to impose such a ban. Earlier, an independent investigative body in New Delhi found that the samples of Coca-Cola and Pepsi contained pesticide levels 24 times higher than the limits set by the Bureau of Indian Standards. A combination of three to five different pesticides were detected, all of which appear to originate from the groundwater used in the production of these beverages. Jawbreakers are usually round and typically have a diameter of one to three centimeters. However, they're designed in a way that if accidentally swallowed, they can pose a choking hazard and even be deadly. It's astonishing that these candies are intended for children, given the risks associated with them. Take for example, the Everlasting Gobstopper, known for its ability to maintain its size and flavor endlessly. While these candies themselves are not harmful, the danger lies in the possibility of choking, or people getting stuck in the perpetual state of jawbreaking delight. Prolonged periods of jaw exercise from eating jawbreakers can lead to unexpected challenges, such as jaw fatigue and may even require unplanned dental appointments. No worries, normal gum is not dangerous. However, a question often asked is whether you can swallow gum. Although this is not recommended, it can hurt you. If you swallow too much gum, it can lead to a blockage in your gastrointestinal system. But have you ever wondered if a piece of gum in your mouth could explode? Apparently so, if the following story is to be believed. A Ukrainian chemistry student at Kiev Polytechnic Institute even lost his life because of it. The boy liked to eat gum, but not ordinary gum. Gum with an extra twist. Namely, he dipped it in extreme amounts of citric acid because he liked the extra pungency. One day, the boy's mother heard the sound of an explosion, and how exactly this could happen, we don't know. But as you can imagine, this story did not end well. In 1876, Moxie was introduced as the very first mass-produced soft drink in the United States, even 10 years before Coca-Cola. Moxie was a super popular drink, but during the Great Depression, it lost its popularity as the company significantly reduced the advertising efforts while Coca-Cola flourished. What sets Moxie apart from other traditional sodas loaded with sugar is its unique flavor profile, often described as an acquired taste. Unlike the usual sweeteners found in popular sodas, Moxie offers a distinctive herbal and slightly bitter taste which is derived from the addition of gentian root. The origin of moxie can be attributed to Dr. Augustine Thompson, who developed his own formula. He combined various herbs in his own brew. In 1998, Frito-Lay introduced a new striking product, Lay's Doritos and Ruffles Wow Chips. These chips were marketed as fat-free options, all thanks to a special ingredient called Olestra. A manufacturer named Procter & Gamble invested massive amounts of time and money, somewhere between $200 and $300 million, just to develop this calorie-free fat substitute. Unlike regular potato chips, which are dried in oils, Wow Chips were prepared using Alestra, which had been approved by the FDA as a safe food additive. Alestra promised the taste and texture of fat, but without the calories, because its molecules were too large to be absorbed by our bodies, passing through our digestive system undigested. Initially, Alestra seemed like a dream come true for people looking to lose weight. Unfortunately, the reality of eating WoW chips turned out to be less rosy. Many consumers experienced unpleasant side effects similar to those of laxatives, such as abdominal cramps and diarrhea, 
Despite this setback, the initial launch of WoW chips was a huge success, with sales reaching a whopping $347 million, making it the best-selling new product in the United States that year. But negative media attention about the side effects began to affect sales. By the year 2000, sales had dropped to $200 million. In 2004, Frito-Lay quietly rebranded WoW chips as light products. While there's no confirmed information about any changes in composition, Alestra is still listed in the ingredients. Bang Energy, a well-known energy drink in the United States, faced legal troubles. They had advertised their beverage as a kind of miracle remedy that could reverse intellectual limitations and treat neurological disorders. In 2018, a lawsuit was filed against Bang Energy, claiming that the company engaged in false advertising by featuring super creatine on their product. Authorities allege that Bang marketed their product in a misleading manner. In September of that year, a jury ruled in favor of Bang Energy, awarding them $293 million in damages for false advertising and other alleged wrongdoing. As a result of this judgment, a permanent injunction was issued against continuing to promote their drinks as containing super creatine. A judge emphasized the importance of this permanent injunction to protect the interests of Bang Energy and their marketing share, which was negatively impacted by the claims. The jury agreed that Bang Energy's ingredients didn't contain creatine, which is a widely used organic supplement, often taken to promote muscle development. However, the jury didn't find that Bang Energy misled customers about the benefits of their beverage. Airheads are brightly colored, soft candies available in various flavors. While primarily made in the United States, they can also be found in Australia and China. They may look like gumballs, but Airheads are known for their intense sweetness, though they aren't as popular as traditional gumballs. The history of Airheads dates back to 1948 in the United States, and they're usually made with chocolate ganache as a base. You can find them in flavors like peach, strawberry, or lemon, and some are even coated with cheap candies or nuts. However, there was some controversy surrounding Airheads bites due to the use of soccer as an ingredient. Saccharin is actually a substance used in detergents and toothpaste. There's been reports of severe side effects from prolonged use of this substance, prompting most Airheads candies to remove this ingredient from their formulations. Saccharin is an artificial substance designed to mimic the taste of natural honey without using real honeycomb. Because it's cost-effective to produce, many companies try to replicate its flavor as accurately as possible. One downside of Airheads and similar gum-like candy brands is that they don't always contain real flavorful ingredients that contribute to the taste experience. What do extra energy candy, extra strong energy candy, and mixed fruit candy have in common? Well, it's a banned substance called tetalafil. Tetalafil may only be prescribed by a registered healthcare professional to a patient. So the fact that it was found in candy is pretty bizarre and even dangerous. Without the supervision of health professionals, this substance could cause loss of vision, hearing, a drop in blood pressure, and can even lead to strokes and heart attacks. These candies were made in Malaysia and were immediately removed from shelves. But it didn't stop there. A new law was even introduced that people found with these candies must pay a huge fine and could face up to 10 years in prison. The infamous whale beer was banned before it was even presented to the general public. This ban came down to the use of whale meat in the brewing process, something that didn't comply with strict food regulations. The public health authority is very strict when it comes to what ends up in our food. Everything must adhere to food laws and come from accredited suppliers. The company involved with the whale meat didn't have the proper license to use whale meat for human consumption. Now you might think that the brewery should have checked whether using whale meat was legal, but their response was that the whale meat is eaten during the midwinter festival and can even be bought in stores. So according to them, it was a fine ingredient for their beer brew. It's also not uncommon for brewers to add all sorts of unusual things to their beer. Think donuts or moon dust. This company even claimed that their beer with an alcohol content of 5.2% and a touch of whale meat was actually healthier due to its high protein content and low fat content. On their website, they even suggested that drinking this beer can make you a real viking. A company called Kraft Foods decided to halt the production of candy shaped like flattened animals in response to protests by animal rights activists. This candy, known as Trolley Roadkill Gummy Candy, features fruity flavors and is designed to resemble animals run over by cars, complete with tire tracks. A spokesperson for Kraft acknowledged consumer concerns and expressed regret that the product could be misinterpreted. As a result, they decided to discontinue the production of the candy and sell any remaining stocks. The decision to stop production came after animal rights organizations warned that the candy could potentially encourage children to engage in cruel behavior towards animals. Fusion Projects, a company based in Chicago, was responsible for creating a series of drinks we know as Four Loco. The original recipe of Four Loco actually contained a lot of caffeine, 
That may sound innocuous, but there were quite a few concerns about the mix of alcohol and caffeine, with people fearing that the drink would be especially appealing to younger people. Which, of course, wasn't the intention. Due to all the concern, and because various states even banned the drink, Fusion Projects decided to make some changes to the Four Loco product. In December 2010, they removed caffeine, taurine, and guarana from the drink's ingredients. This meant that Four Loco was no longer what you would call an energy drink. The reason so many people were concerned is that the combination of alcohol and caffeine can be quite risky. Caffeine is a kind of stimulant, so it can mask the effects of alcohol. People might then drink more than is good for them, which can lead to alcohol poisoning, impaired judgment, and a greater risk of accidents. Many people loved Four Loco, and there even emerged a black market where people sold it for much higher prices because it was very hard to get. In Spain, the Three Kings processions on January 5th are a beloved tradition in which three wise men travel through cities and towns to deliver gifts to the baby Jesus. A highlight of these processions have always been the moment when Balthazar and Gaspar distributed sweets to cheering children along the route. Unfortunately, a tragic incident led to a change in this centuries-old tradition in Madrid. A six-year-old boy was seriously injured when he was crushed by a Christmas float while excitedly chasing after the candy. As a result, the city of Madrid decided to ban the throwing of candy during the Three Kings procession. Session. Instead, the three wise men will parade through the city and wave to the crowd. On streets where there are sufficient safety barriers to protect children, the wise men will still be allowed to throw candy. They will walk alongside the floats and distribute candies to the people along the route. A security team member commented that it's amazing what people are willing to do to get a piece of candy. Lollipops are apparently dangerous, because here we have another lollipop that had to be banned. The usual flavors of this candy were strawberry, watermelon, blueberry, and cherry flavors. However, you'll never believe why the lollipop candy was rightfully removed from shelves. In its normal form, the lollipop is completely legal. But people decided to use the plastic tube, airtight pouch, and cigar band for other things. In fact, some people discovered that they could use the lollipop for smoking illegal substances. In addition, the 599 lollipops each were also easily reusable. So it's only logical that the authorities decided to quickly remove the item from shelves. Can you imagine a drink with a ridiculously high content of 95.5% alcohol? Yeah, you heard that right. This Polish drink is a beverage officially considered the strongest liquor in the world. It's primarily used by people who want to make their own flavored vodka. This drink is known for its extremely high alcohol content, and it's so potent that you usually wouldn't want to drink it straight up. Unfortunately, there's also a tragic story about a teenager in Australia who reportedly didn't have a good experience with this alcohol, and sadly didn't know how dangerous that this could actually be. The family of that teenager ultimately did everything they could to get this drink removed from major liquor stores in Australia, but it's still available in some smaller shops. In Poland, where this drink originates, you can find it in multiple stores. Some people use it to flavor their own homemade beverages and liquors. However, it's a dangerous drink because if you drink too much, it can lead to alcohol poisoning. Candy corn, the sweet treat that pops up every Halloween, has had its share of controversy. Many candy corn manufacturers tout their products as containing real honey, but be cautious, because other potentially harmful ingredients could be hidden. Even if there is real honey in it, it doesn't mean the presence of other unwanted substances is excluded. The main ingredient in candy corn is sugar, which can raise concerns about excessive sugar consumption. Additionally, it contains colorings such as yellow 6, yellow 5, red 5, and artificial flavorings. When we examine the ingredient list of most Halloween candies, we often find preservatives, food colorings, and high sugar content. A particular dye, yellow 5, has been linked to various health issues, including blurred vision, migraines, fatigue, and anxiety. There have also been claims that yellow 5 can cause chromosome damage, although there's limited studies on that subject. A well-known fact is that consuming candies with so much sugar as found in candy corn can lead to severe gas and diarrhea. In the summer in New York City, there's a cool drink everyone's talking about. But the problem is, it's actually illegal. If you've ever spent a day at one of the city's public beaches, you probably heard the mysterious call, Nutcracker Nutcracker. It's like a secret summons for those in the know. For just about $10, you can approach a Nutcracker vendor and get a sweet mix of a strong liquor, juice, and other mysterious things. These drinks come in all shapes and sizes. Some are frozen like super potent slushies, while others resemble fruity punch with a naughty kick of alcohol. What they all have in common is that they're all pretty strong. 
Nutcrackers are usually homemade, and each vendor has their own secret recipe. But the problem is selling nutcrackers without a license is actually illegal according to New York law. Sometimes the police even try to crack down on these nutcrackers. In 2010, prominent leaders like Al Sharpton began to worry about these drinks. They didn't like that the nutcracker drinks weren't being regulated and were concerned about people's health, especially children. So they came up with the nutcracker law in 2011. This law stated that barbershops could lose their license if caught selling alcohol to minors. If you grew up in the 90s, you probably came across the legendary Wonder Ball at some point. But somewhere in the early 2000s, this delightful chocolate ball filled with candies mysteriously disappeared from store shelves. The Wonder Ball is a brand of chocolate originally made in the United States by Nestle, and later by the Frankfurt Candy and Chocolate Company. These unique candies have a milk chocolate exterior, with a hollow interior filled with small candies. The Wonder Ball was carefully wrapped in foil, placed in a small box, and often included a collectible sticker. There was even a version called the Wonder Ball Plus Prize, which featured a chocolate ball filled with tangy dextrose candies, as well as stickers and a small toy. However, the original Wonder Ball contained small plastic toys, which raised concerns about choking hazards for younger children. Both consumers and competitors of candy companies expressed their concerns, leading to significant public pressure. In 2004, the Wonder Ball made a comeback, this time with a SpongeBob theme. But unfortunately, rumors circulated about a child choking on the candy inside, once again leading to the disappearance of the Wonder Ball. Have you ever eaten a candy that was so sour it made your face twitch? The extremely sour candies of Warheads went to a whole new level. In fact, these candies were acidic enough to burn a hole through your tongue. Not surprisingly, this is why the candies were named Warheads Extreme Sour. The effects of the ingredients, mainly the hydrogenated palm pole, which gives off malic acid in large amounts. When it melts, it can cause ulcers and tooth erosion. It came to light when a little 10-year-old girl ate these sour candies. The extremely acidic candy gave a burning sensation in her mouth almost immediately. But the candy could also be dangerous, as the acidic could burn off parts of your skin. When this became known, people were shocked by the acidity in the product. Not surprisingly, it was banned in several countries. It would be strange to live in a world without monster energy drinks, especially if you live in the United States, where they're very popular. But did you know that some countries in the European Union have restricted or even banned certain monster energy drinks? They said that the use of super creatine is not allowed in the European Union. Monster, however, claimed that the amino acid L-arginine was good for muscle growth, but it was actually only present in minimal amounts in the drinks. But other authorities disagreed. So even in a country where monster energy drinks are mega popular, they can cause quite a bit of trouble in other parts of the world. Sour Patch Kids, like other candies, offer no health benefits, and you should eat them in moderation, or better yet, just avoid them altogether. These candies contain ingredients such as sugar, cornstarch, tartric acid, glucose syrup, citric acid, and various artificial colorings and flavorings. One concerning ingredient is glucose syrup especially high fructose corn syrup, or HFCS, which is linked to various health issues, such as diabetes, obesity, and high blood pressure. Moreover, studies have shown that HFCS may contain elevated levels of mercury, which can have harmful effects on organs, the brain, and the immune system with regular consumption. However, a bill has been introduced to ban the use of five harmful chemicals found in candies like Sour Patch Kids. Recent scientific findings have linked these food additives to serious health problems, including an increased risk of cancer, as well as damage to the nervous system, hyperactivity, and other neurological disorders. These five chemicals pose a particular risk to children, who often consume these candies more frequently than adults and whose developing bodies are more sensitive to toxic exposure. These chemicals are already banned or highly restricted in the European Union and other countries. The sudden disappearance of Bacardi 151, a super strong rum, in 2016 raised many questions and mysteries. Bacardi quietly removed this potent drink from the shelves without a word or explanation. If you're wondering why that's so noteworthy, you should know that the 151 in the name refers to the alcoholic content, which was a whopping 75.5%. That's almost twice the alcoholic content of what's typically in a bottle of Bacardi. And that's already some pretty heavy stuff. What made Bacardi 151 even more mysterious was the label warning against using it for flaming dishes or other drinks. Although Bacardi took precautions by placing metal flame arresters in the caps of the bottles. Because it was flammable, lawsuits still ensued. While enjoying the colorful Skittles, it's worth knowing that there may be a surprising ingredient hidden inside. Titanium dioxide, a substance often used in these popular candies, has raised concerns in some countries. 
due to reports suggesting that it can cause long-term DNA damage. This has led to an increased risk of cancer for those who consume it. While titanium dioxide is still widely used in the United States, the European Union announced in 2021 that this additive is considered unsafe for use in food and will eventually be banned. In fact, Sweden and Norway have already taken this step. They were also concerned about allergic reactions and hyperactivity in children due to the food colorings used in the product, such as Yellow 5 and Yellow 6. And then there are zombie Skittles, which have been a thing since 2018. They put a new twist on the familiar Skittle flavors, with rather eerie names like Chilling Citrus Punch, Mummified Melon, Boogeyman Blackberry, Ghastly Green Apple, and Blood Red Berry. But what made these candies truly bizarre was a single Skittle with a taste of rotten zombie, which made people almost gag when they tried it. Many of today's products have changed recipes over the years, mainly because more and more ingredients were found out to be harmful. Blue Smarties are a good example. For a while, about three years, blue Smarties disappeared from the market. Among the other Smarties, white ones took their place. But why were the blue Smarties removed from the shelves? According to the company, the ban was instituted because they were in the process of removing all artificial colors from the candy. And the blue chemical that was now being used had no natural substitute. However, there were other various claims that said the blue Smarties made children hyper or that the chemicals in them exceeded the toxicity threshold. At one point, the US EPA called the chemicals used a health risk. Pomac was a soft drink that had a champagne flavor and was made by Dr. Pepper in the 1960s. People really enjoyed it, until they discovered what was actually inside it. Cyclamate is an artificial sweetener that is about 30 to 50 times sweeter than the ordinary sugar. It's often combined with other artificial sweeteners, especially saccharin, to enhance the taste. Cyclamate isn't as expensive compared to some other sweeteners. It also remains stable even when heated, but some countries have banned it due to safety concerns. In the United Kingdom, it was banned in the late 1960s. However, in 1996, the European Union decided to reconsider and said it was okay to use it again. So in Europe, it's back in the sweetener zone. In the Philippines, it was also initially banned, but in 2013, the Philippine FDA approved it for drinking. However, in the United States and South Korea, they have banned it and advised caution regarding the sweetener. Everyone knows by now that smoking's bad, but there was a time when we couldn't resist the temptation of candy cigarettes. After all, it was just candy, something many of us enjoyed chewing on in the 80s and 90s. It couldn't be as harmful as real cigarettes loaded with tobacco, right? So how much harm could a white candy stick with a red tip designed to resemble a flame really do? This kind of candy emerged in the early 20th century. While the candy cigarettes we enjoyed were made of sugary chalk, some countries even concealed powdered sugar inside the packaging to create the illusion of smoking. This product became popular before it was eventually banned in 13 countries, including Canada, Brazil, Turkey, New Zealand, and certain parts of the United States. The ban was implemented because these candies clearly desensitized children to the harmful effects of tobacco smoke, making it look cool and trendy. If a child finds it fashionable to mimic smoking with a white candy stick, they're more likely to take up smoking later in life. So it's not really surprising why it was decided to remove the candy cigarettes from stores and ban them in most countries. You are probably already familiar with the Kinder Surprise Egg, which is made of chocolate. Inside the Kinder Surprise is a small toy in a plastic capsule. This, of course, is not edible. But according to the US FDA, it also may not be sold because of choking hazards. So no matter how happy a child is with the toy inside, there is a risk. There have been several reports of people suffocating from the toy that was inside the Kinder Surprise. In some countries, there's even a fine of $2,500 per egg should you decide to sell it. Recently, Kinder Surprises were also reportedly pulled from shelves in several countries, including the United Kingdom because salmonella was found. Ordering homemade, unregulated alcoholic slushies online is definitely a risky choice. In the past, before New York banned Frosties, you could order these enticing and colorful drinks through a delivery service on Instagram. They cost $10 each and were available in flavors like Blue Hawaiian and Dragonberry. However, rumors circulated that Frosties were mixed with substances like codeine and other banned substances. There were even reports of people becoming extremely intoxicated and experiencing hallucinations after drinking this item. In reality, Frosties contain a moderate amount of alcohol, but they were primarily filled with large amounts of sugar, 
What's bizarre is that the people behind this drink seemed unconcerned about whether their customers had to reach the legal drinking age. The notoriety surrounding Frosties eventually grew too fast, leading to the banning of their operations amidst speculation about potential interventions by authorities. Licorice might seem like a tasty treat, but if you eat too much of it, especially if you're over 40 and have heart issues or high blood pressure, it can be really bad for you. Licorice actually comes from a plant. The plant is called Glycera glabra and grows in various parts of the world like Southern Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. People have been eating licorice root for centuries, even soldiers in ancient times to quench their thirst during battles and long journeys. What makes this candy tricky is that eating too much of it, more than about 2 ounces per day for at least 2 weeks, can cause serious health problems. It can raise your blood pressure and even mess up your heart rate, which isn't good for your heart. But that's not all. Black licorice can also interact with certain medications and other things you might ingest. And if you eat too much of it, it can lower the amount of potassium in your body. Potassium is super important for a healthy heart, and having too little of it can lead to serious issues, like irregular heartbeats and even serious heart problems. So while little licorice once in a while is okay, it's wise not to overdo it. Lead is a chemical element that is toxic to the body. Being exposed to too much lead can even cause lead poisoning. So the last place you would expect to find it is in a delicious lollipop. That brings us to the Tamarindo Lollipops, a dark brown fruit flavored candy attached to a white or orange striped stick. Thousands, if not millions of people have eaten the lollipop by the time the specific case of a two year old child came to light. After a routine blood test, dangerous amounts of lead were found in his body. It turned out that the candy wrappers alone contained 21,000 to 22,000 parts per million of lead. The sticks had 400 parts per million, and the candy itself had about 0.2 parts per million. But what does this mean, you're probably wondering? Well, it could lead to brain damage, memory loss, stomach pain, behavioral disorders, and it could even be deadly. Not surprisingly, these lollipops were immediately banned. Energy drinks like Red Bull have come under scrutiny due to concerns about their safety. This is because of their high caffeine content and the presence of an ingredient called taurine. In some countries, including Poland, France, and the Netherlands, certain types of Red Bull are straight out banned or even restricted to individuals over 18 years old. The huge amounts of caffeine in these drinks and the fact that they are often marketed to a younger consumer is the issue. A recent study revealed that some energy drinks sold in discount stores contain as much caffeine as 6 to 8 cups of coffee. This excessive caffeine content can lead to adverse effects on the heart, increased feelings of anxiety, sleep problems, and even dehydration. There's also concerns about taurine, a naturally occurring amino acid found in these drinks. In small amounts, taurine is considered safe, but some people worry that it may affect the growth and metabolism of children. France even took a drastic measure by imposing a 12-year-old ban on Red Bull containing taurine in the formula. In 2004, Lucas Lemon and Lucas Lemon Cone Chili Candies in the United States found themselves in a sour situation when an investigation led by the Orange County Register uncovered a disturbing issue. These sweet treats, produced by a Mexican subsidiary of Mars, were found to contain alarmingly high levels of lead during testing. In fact, the amount of lead in these candies exceeded the FDA's deemed safe limits by a factor of two. This is highly concerning, as lead in food is associated with serious long-term health effects, including high blood pressure and kidney damage as noted by the World Health Organization. The impact of lead on children can disrupt their body as it develops, affecting their nervous system and kidneys. What makes it even worse is that lead can remain in a person's bones for years. Despite the dangers posed by lead, this candy managed to avoid a ban through a legal loophole. It was packaged to resemble salt shakers and labeled as seasoning, allowing it to remain on store shelves. Mars claimed that these products were old and voluntarily removed from the market, eventually ceasing production in favor of a different version of the candy. However, some states such as Illinois took action to protect their residents by restricting or banning the sale of Lucas Candy nationwide. Gatorade is a sports drink with vibrant colors and flavors that you surely know from the football fields and athletic competitions. It's a thirst quencher for athletes of all ages, and you can easily score it from vending machines. But did you know that there was a time when Gatorade had to undergo a bit of a change? In 2013, Gatorade had to adjust its recipe for the European market, all because of a substance called brominated vegetable oil, BVO. They used BVO to mix the various colors and flavors that Gatorade is famous for. BVO can be associated with various problems with your nervous system. 
as well as skin irritation, pounding headaches, coordination issues, forgetfulness, and fatigue. So for that reason, the European Union completely banned BVO. Japan also joined in and said no to the specific ingredient. And to this day, Gatorade is still not welcome in Norway and Austria. This is because the drink still contains colorings with complicated names like Yellow 5 and 6, which can pose quite a few health risks. In the United States, Little Debbie Swiss Rolls are a sweet treat that carries a secret. These delicious cake rolls, however, contain coloring known as Yellow 5 and Red 40. While they are permitted in the European Union, they do carry mandatory warnings about their potential adverse effects on children. In the United States, such warnings are not mandatory. Norway and Austria have gone a step further by completely banning these chocolate treats. Yellow 5, also known as tartrazine, is a synthetic dye, often used to give foods a vibrant yellow or orange hue. But here's the interesting part. Research has shown that Yellow 5 may contribute to hyperactivity or behavioral problems in children. It also links to allergic reactions, ranging from mild symptoms like hives and itching to severe cases of anaphylaxis. Red 40, also known as Allura Red AC, is a synthetic red dye, commonly used to give foods a vivid red color. While findings are mixed, some studies have suggested a potential link between Red 40 and an increased risk of certain forms of cancer, including tumors in the immune system. That's why the European Union has placed warning labels on the packaging. I can see you thinking, how can Haribo's famous gummy bears pose any danger? On Amazon, there were over 50 pages of reviews with most people agreeing on one thing. Namely, that if you eat too many gummy bears at once, you will need to go to the bathroom quickly. Further investigation revealed that this was due to the sugar substitute of the sugar-free gummy bears, Licasin, which is almost as sweet as sugar. Although this candy is relatively safe to eat, the bigger problem lies in the artificial sweetener, Maltitol, which is not fully digestible. In fact, it ferments in your intestines. This means it breaks down biological materials into simpler substances. A few grams of it could cause you to run to the toilet quickly. Have you ever experienced this yourself? Let me know in the comments. Haw flakes, an exotic Chinese candy, are made from the fruit of the Chinese hawthorn. These small delicacies are typically pink in color and take the form of delicate thin discs with a thickness of only about two millimeters. Haw flakes are generally quite affordable, sometimes even found for as little as 50 cents per package in Asian markets. They're often packaged in cylindrical stacks with colorful labels, reminiscent of festive Chinese fireworks. Additionally, they're known for their sweet and slightly tangy flavor and they're often served to guests during tea sessions or simply enjoyed as a treat for children. Some people even take them in a combination with bitter Chinese herbal medicine to aid digestion. Sounds pretty interesting so far, right? But here's where the mystery comes in. Haw flakes have caught the attention of the FDA, the agency that broadly oversees food quality in the United States. On multiple occasions, they have been seized because they contain a specific artificial coloring called Ponsu 4R which is not approved by the US FDA. While Ponsu 4R is used in Europe, Asia, and Australia, it's strictly prohibited in the United States. As a result, some brands have replaced the candy with a different red coloring. Okay, let's talk about raw milk. But why would anyone ban milk, I hear you thinking, right? Well, it's all about health risks. Raw milk is banned everywhere in Canada. The reason is that raw milk is not pasteurized, which means it's not heated to kill harmful bacteria. And that can cause problems, especially for people like children, pregnant women, and older people, and people with weaker immune systems. These groups are at higher risks of food poisoning, and the risks of raw milk are quite serious, causing all sorts of nasty symptoms of foodborne illnesses. Despite the ban, some people still try to get raw milk. For example, by purchasing it in the states bordering the United States, where it is legal. Hershey's, the famous chocolate brand from the United States, has received quite a bit of criticism from chocolate enthusiasts around the world especially in the United Kingdom. Some people claim that Hershey's chocolate can't compare to the delicious taste of brands like Cadbury, calling it bitter, waxy, and stating that it leaves an unpleasant aftertaste. But there's more. On December 30th, 2022, Hershey got entangled in a lawsuit. They are accused of not disclosing that some of their dark chocolate bars contain lead and cadmium. A lawsuit was filed after Consumer Reports warned of dangerous heavy metals in dark chocolate bars. Interestingly, not only Hershey, but also other well-known brands got into trouble. According to Consumer Reports, three of Hershey's dark chocolate bars exceeded the maximum allowable levels of lead or cadmium in California, with just about 28 grams of chocolate. These bars include Hershey's Special Dark Mildly Sweet Chocolate, Lily's Extra Dark Chocolate 70% Cocoa, and Lily's Extreme Dark Chocolate 85% Cocoa. So aside from the taste issue, some Hershey's chocolate bars may also contain harmful substances. 
Sassafras is a tree originating from North America and East Asia, formerly used in traditional medicine. However, the true form of sassafras was banned by the American FDA. This is because it contained an ingredient called safrol, and that stuff is not exactly healthy. In fact, the FDA has classified it as a carcinogenic substance. So the more safrol you ingest, and the longer you do it, the greater the risk of cancer. And as if that wasn't enough, it's also used in making ecstasy. Some scientists believe that the roots and bark of the sassafras cause cancer and damage to your liver. If an adult ingests just 5 milliliters, it could even be fatal. And as if that wasn't enough, you can also experience side effects from vomiting, high blood pressure, hallucinations, sweating, and hot flashes. So sassafras tea is a tea drink you probably should never drink. What's your favorite drink? Let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos we've made, click one on the screen or take a look at the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.